we got it. There is finally Argo CD as a service. GitHub through Argo CD and Flux are taking over the industry. And it was only a matter of time until somebody comes up with the idea to run one of those two, in this case Argo CD, as a service. So instead of us installing Argo CD and configuring it and adding additional things on top of it that we might or might not need, we can just consume it as a service, as SaaS. And that service is called Concrete. So let's take a look at how it works. But before we do, I must warn you that I will not go into details of how Argo CD works and what is GitOps and all the stuff around it. I will assume that you either already use Argo CD or that you're familiar with Argo CD. And if you're not, then the list to the playlist with a bunch of videos about Argo CD and other Argo projects is in the description. So if you don't understand what I'm talking about, go to the description, watch Argo CD videos, and then come back. I'll wait. I mean, I will not really wait. You can pause the video and come back to it once you're familiar with Argo CD. And if you're already in Argo CD Ninja, then this might be very interesting. This might be just the thing that you might need. And now we are going into the demo. I already created a cluster and I forked a repo that we will use for the examples. So let's get going and open Concrete in a browser and see whether it is worthwhile our time, whether it's a good investment, whether you should use it or not. The first time we open Concrete and just after we register, we are presented with the wizard. And that wizard is a good representation of the simplicity that the team behind Concrete is trying to accomplish. The first thing we need to do is specify the workspace name. It can be any name as long as it is not occupied by somebody else. And that gives us the URL that we are going to use later to connect to that Argo CD. Then comes the moment of silence and patience until the workspace is created, which doesn't really take long, it's a couple of moments. We are halfway through, now we need to log in to the newly created Argo CD workspace. Just follow the instructions to install the CLI if you don't have it already and log in to the newly created workspace so that you can communicate with Argo CD running in somebody else's cluster through your terminal. Even though most of the time you do not interact directly with Argo CD, especially not through a terminal, we use Git for storing our manifest and letting Argo CD synchronize Git and your actual state, which is your cluster. And the UI is mostly used to see what's going on to observe the state. And finally, we need to add our cluster, the cluster where our workloads will be running, the cluster with our applications, to Argo CD. So I'm going to execute the command that is given to me, which will not add my cluster. Instead, that command will list all the contexts I have in my cube config, in my local cube config. And then I'm going to repeat that same command with the name of the context. And through that, it will know that it should use the cluster that is related to the context that we selected. And that's about it. That was the full setup. And now you might be thinking, hey, I can set up Argo CD in my own cluster myself in more or less the same amount of time. But that's not really true because this service does not contain only pure or core Argo CD. It contains a couple of other things that are frankly painful to set up. And on top of that, somebody else is managing your third party applications. And that's always awesome as long as you can do that, as long as you're allowed to use SaaS. So let me add my first application and see how it goes. What's the magic behind all this? However, at this moment, Concrete does not have access to my Git repositories. So I need to give it the access so that it can manage the definitions that are stored in one of my Git repositories. Actually, most of my Git repositories are Gargo CD or Flux application manifests. Now it's all about following the instructions, you know, click, 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 next, next, next. And we are presented with all the repositories that I allowed Concrete to use. And now we are coming to the first issue or uh, oversight from the team behind Concrete. Those repositories are ordered alphabetically. And let me scroll down to the bottom so that you see the issue at hand. Only a fraction of my repositories are listed here. I did not go further than the letter B. 
And as far as I can see, there is no pagination. There is no way for me to say next or show me more repositories or what's not. So as it is now, either you cannot have many repositories managed by Concrete or you need to be clever and make sure that the repositories you want to use with Argo CD and Concrete are at the top of that alphabetical list. So let me go back to the list and show you the repository that we will use today. It is called one-concrete-demo. Initially, I named the repository Concrete Demo, but since that repository did not appear on a list and I couldn't effectively use it, I had to rename the repository to start with the number 1 so that it is on the top. Anyways, I will select that repository and see what happens. There are a couple of things we can select and it's not clear what all those things are. So let me go to the question mark tooltip and see what they are. <laughs> Somebody forgot to write help or tooltip. It all says to do. So this is the message to the concrete team. Hey, whenever you write to do in your code, you should replace that with something that is slightly more informative. Anyways, we're almost done. We're almost there. Let me edit that repository and see what else is there to set up. Actually, there isn't much. We are finished with setting up the repo itself. And now there are hopefully no more obstacles that will prevent me from seeing the magic behind creating an Argo CD application. Let's go through this fast. I need to type the application name. Cool. The repository is already pre-selected. I should specify the branch and the path to the directory that contains all the manifests that I want to manage through Concrete and Argo CD. And there is the namespace. I will simulate that this is production. But essentially, you can let Argo CD manage your applications in any namespace uh, as long as you have permissions to use it. And then there are advanced options. I will leave all of them as is, except for the one that says prune resources. I think that that should be default for every application. I know that it is potentially dangerous to delete your applications from a cluster when you delete the file, but hey, if you don't want that, then do not delete the file. If you do delete the desired state, then the actual state should be deleted as well. Now, I will not walk you through the rest of the options because if you're familiar with Argo CD, you know exactly what they are. And if you're not, as I said, the link is in the description. There is a whole playlist with all the videos about Argo CD. By the way, there is also a link to what is GitOps type of video if you're confused from the very start. And that's about it. My application is now being deployed. It is currently out of sync and soon it will be fully up and running and I will rejoice. If you do not like concrete UI, you can go to the Argo CD UI. I personally think that their UI is just the right level of simplicity. And if you need more than that, then you go to Argo CD. I like that concrete is not reinventing the wheel. I like that they're not recreating the whole Argo CD UI because that would be a waste of time. They should concentrate on the added value and the added value is running it as a SaaS. So you have full Argo CD web UI and you have a new concrete UI, which is more focused on managing things in the SaaS way of doing stuff than replicating what Argo CD already offers. Anyways, my application is running in the cluster. I can see it through the Argo CD web UI or I can see the reduced amount of information from concrete itself. There are a couple of other things that we can do that do not come out of the box in Argo CD, but they are pluggable and concrete plug them in already for you. And one of those things is notifications. So we can get Slack notifications depending on the conditions and what is happening with our applications. So let's take a look at what we have over there. As you can see, we can select the types of events that should produce notifications. Normally, I would check all of those except the first one. I don't think that anybody should get a notification that something was deployed because then we are bombed with notifications and then we start ignoring notifications. Notifications should be important. They should fire when there is something wrong, when something requires our attention. But you might feel different and in any case, you can just select which types of events you want to produce notifications. And for all that to work, we need to connect to some Slack workspace and there is a link as you can expect and then there are some steps I will try to go through them fast and see what's going on. Now, in my case, it doesn't work. I do not know whether I did something wrong or there is something wrong with the service. In any case, I could not connect my Slack workspace with Concrete. It's most likely me. I did not bother trying to figure out what's wrong because I do not like receiving those types of notifications on Slack. But if you do, then you got them as long as this works for you. And I was the exception. 
And the next integration is image updater. And that's very exciting for a couple of reasons. First of all, because image updater is absolutely awesome and it's a must and you should definitely use it even though it is in beta. And the second reason why this is awesome is that uh, image updater is a bit painful to set up. It is not really there yet and it's a bit annoying to be honest. And with concrete it comes out of the box, we just need to answer a couple of questions. If you're not familiar with image updater, let me explain how the things work more or less without it and then you will understand the benefits. Typically we need to build an image and then we need to change the manifests in a Git repository to reflect that new tag that we just built. And from there on Argo CD will do whatever needs to be done to synchronize the new manifest that contains the reference to a new image and run it in our cluster and do all the things that needs to be done. With the image updater, we do not need to update the manifests. Instead, we can just build the image, push it to the registry, and then let the process inside of a cluster, the image updater, update the manifest and do all the changes that need to be done in a Git repo. In other words, Argo image updater saves you from modifying manifests every time you build a new image. Essentially, there are two things we need to do. First, to specify the range of the versions that will be managed with the image updater. I will assume that you are using semantic versioning. If you are not, then I think that there are other options. I never used anything but semantic versioning, so I will keep it to that. And I will specify the expression that will tell the system, hey, I want the image updater to manage my manifests and update them whenever I push a new version of my image, as long as that version is tagged as a version 100 and above all the way until the version 2. It could be any other combination, it's up to you to define which range of versions is acceptable for you. Or you can say, hey, I wanted to manage all the versions. I do not recommend that. I think that we should pay special attention when jumping to the next major version of our application because that means that it contains breaking changes and we do not want to take breaking changes lightly. Otherwise, if there are no breaking changes, then uh, it's still the same major version. We're just changing the minor or the patch version of an application of a release. By the way, if you're not familiar with semantic versioning, there is a video for that as well. The link is in the description. And the second thing we need to do is just enable the service. That's it. And now comes the moment of truth. I will build a new image with a new tag and I will push that image to my container registry, which in this case is Docker Hub, but it can be any. And if everything works as expected, that should result in a new release being deployed to my cluster without me touching Git or the manifests or definitions of that application. And I can confirm whether that's the case or not through many different ways and means. And for simplicity reasons, I will just go to the Argo CD web UI and double check the tag that is defined in the current manifest, in the actual manifest used in the cluster. And it worked. You can see that the image was updated with a new tag. So I got my new release deployed without touching anything, without doing anything beyond building the image and pushing it to a container registry. From there on, Argo CD and image updater and concrete made sure that the manifests were updated in my Git repository and that that was applied to the cluster and that we live happily ever after. If you do not believe me, and you should, but if you don't, try it out and then go to your Git repository and you will see that there is a new commit that updated the manifest of your application. To be more precise, it did not update the manifest of your application. It created a new file that contains the patch that will update your manifest, but the result is more or less the same. What else can we do with concrete? Well, not much. And that's a good thing, but I'll get back to that part later. We can manage the clusters, or to be more precise, we cannot manage the clusters with concrete, but we can add the clusters to which our applications are deployed. We can manage the repositories used by the service. We can manage the members or the users that can use the service and we can give the service some money. There is a free option and there is a paid option. I think that the prices are fair. You get only two applications with the free option. And then if you pay 30 bucks a month, we get 30 applications. And if we pay 150 bucks per month, we get 200 applications. Those prices sound reasonable to me. Maybe two applications for the free option is too little, too small amounts to really try it out. I would say that I would need at least five applications to try out the service. But nevertheless, 
there is a free option there is a paid option you choose whichever one fits actually the free option does not fit almost anybody because two applications that's nothing but it should be more or less sufficient to try it out and see whether you want to take the service and pay for it finally there is documentation documentation contains almost nothing and that's not necessarily a bad thing because concrete is a very very simple service and more importantly it did not try to reinvent the wheel. This is Argo CD as a service, even though legally they probably cannot call it like that. So all the information you need is really in Argo CD documentation and the few things that are special to concrete are very easy to figure out, understand and what's or not. Even though there are to-dos in most of the tooltips, but hey, it's a new project, I guess. So, should you use concrete? I would say yes. Personally, I prefer everything as a service instead of managing something myself. The more I use SaaS, the more I can concentrate on my own stuff, on my own applications. So SaaS is always welcome. And Concrete is a tiny project. It's not really huge. I would be guessing that it's managed by a couple of people. And that's a good thing. I like that they did not try to make a monster out of it. Instead, I imagine that the conversation was, hey, Argo City is awesome. There is nothing special we should do. There are no big missing features in Argo City. And even if they are, they should be contributed back to the open source project and Concrete can focus only on providing a service instead of being special. I like how close it is to Argo CD. I like how much it is not reinventing the wheel. I like how simple it is, ignoring now the potential complexity of Argo CD itself, which by the way is not complex either. In other words, I think it's a brilliant tiny little service that chose the right path. Argo CD is a service and not something built on top of Argo CD that ended up being completely different from Argo CD. If you like Argo CD, you're likely going to like this service, unless you're maybe a company that cannot use SaaS, and in that case, well, don't.